I know that this is God's set time for many of God's children. Many people have been holding on. Come on, many people have been holding on saying, please, Lord, when is it my turn? When is it my turn? And um, this morning as I was praying and I was walking up and down and just like really just seeking God's face and praying in tongues, I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, Kari, and I didn't know Anton was going to say this, but I heard the Holy Spirit say so clearly to me, it's a season of movement and repositioning for many in the body of Christ. It will be a season of movement, a season of movement. And I know that the Holy Spirit said to me, no longer will you just speak about some prophetic words. No longer will you tell your friends about the prophetic words and write the prophetic words down. But God is saying, this is a season of movement where you will see the prophetic words happening. You will see how they unfold in front of your eyes and you will experience the joy of walking out in the fulfillment of those prophetic words. Because it is a, a, a season of movement where I am repositioning many that is being contained and waiting Amen. season of movement and I know for many of you that some of you have been waiting for those open doors and as I was saying but Lord I know for myself there's certain doors that I myself have been waiting for you know and saying Lord you promised me this door and you said this and I know that you know man that you should lie but you watch over your word so I'm just saying what the Bible is saying and as I was just decreeing this, I heard the Holy Spirit said, it has started. It has started. And I said, Lord, what has started? And he said to me, the tide is turning. The tide is turning in favor of many of my children. And I believe for too long the enemy got it right to interfere, intervene, and block many of the promises that God told us. He, he interv and, and in fact, I actually felt that he overplayed his hands like we said the other time. But I felt the Father was saying, I've seen it, I'm aware of it, and now's my time to act. And I am causing the ties to turn in your favor. And as I looked, I said, Lord, but, but give me another interpretation that speaks to me. And as I started looking at other interpretations of the tide is turning, the Lord, I was amazed to see that the Lord says another word is reversal of your current situation where you are stuck. A reversal of your current situation. Now, I don't know about you, but I believe many of us are really trusting God where the enemy is interfering illegally and unlawfully, overplaying his hands and going beyond the dates and the timelines that God said things have sh should have started happening already. God is saying, there, I'm about to bring a turnaround. There, I'm about to bring a changeover and a reversal. And I was actually reminded last week when we spoke about it, we said that last week, we, we, I spoke about the month of Adar. Can you remember it? And as I told Anton this, he said to me, Kari, remember, Adar, in Adar, the month of Adar, we have Purim. Now, I know there's some of you that won't know what Purim is, but Purim is a holiday where a divine reversal took place spiritually. When in the book of Esther, when Haman was about to, on the 14th of Adar, about to annihilate all the Jews, God had another plan, and God supernaturally intervene, intervened and caused a divine reversal, and that which was meant to happen to the Jews was happening to Haman. And, his, uh, and the Lord said to me, Kari, this is not only a month, like we said last week, of miracles, but this will be a month where there will be divine reversals in the areas you've been trusting God for. And I don't know about you, but I know in my own life, there's some places that I need some divine intervention and some divine reversals. And I know about our own lives, but what about our nation? And this is why I'm saying I'm looking for the Esthers and the Mordecais and the ones that will be willing to say, Lord, pick me. I'm going to be the one that will cause a divine reversal over that which the enemy planned for our nation. I say I am here, Lord, to, divert, to, to, to reverse and release a divine decree of God's purposes and God's plans over our nation and not the enemy's plans. 
You see, when it's our time for the turning of the time, like God said, it will be sovereign. It will be sovereign. Esther went to the king, but I believe in my heart that the decision that the tide was turning was made from heaven. Because remember, she could have gone to the king and he could have refused her. But because God said, this is my time for the tides to turn and for divine reversals, some, something shifted in the spirit. And this is why I believe there's, there's an availability for us in the body of Christ right now for divine reversals. And when God is saying, I am um, releasing divine reversals over my children, that means that I'm reversing and deleting some of the stuff the enemy has established and we has overplayed his hand in your life. I'm canceling it, I'm reversing it, I'm deleting some of it so that my divine plan of recovery, my divine plan of restoration can be put in motion. It's time that God's plan be put in motion in your life, in your family, in our nation, in your city. And you know, as I was praying, the Holy Spirit gave me this scripture, and I don't normally read scriptures. I'm not someone that normally prophesies from scriptures. That's not, that's not who I am. But I felt that I needed an urgency in my heart to release this word. Listen to this. This is from the message translation in Psalms 118, verse 13 and 2, verse 18. Please, if you have time, go read it. The message translation says, pushed into the wall, I called to God from a wide open space. And he answered me. How many of you have felt in some areas of your life that you felt that you were pushed against a wall? Like you're screaming, hello, hello, hello. It's like a wide open space. I mean, that's how we feel even if we look at some of the stuff that's going on in our nation. We feel that we are pushed against the wall saying, Father, is there any way that you can answer us? I thought it, it, it's brilliantly how this Bible just puts it, how we, how we feel. Pushed against a wall, crying out in a wide open space, yet God answered me. I was right on the cliff edge, ready to fall over. But God grabbed me and he held on to me. Then the hand of God turned the tide in my favor and things started changing. And I'm saying, Jesus, I take this for me with everything that I am. Everything. Because I know there's some people that feel that you might be in a place in your life where you are standing at this edge of a cliff in certain areas. Might not be in all areas. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe it's a family member. That you're really trusting God and you're feeling like your, your praise is echoing there in the wide open space. But God is saying, I'm answering you because this is the season of divine reversals. And that which the enemy planned will be reversed so that my perfect plan can start playing out in your life. And this is the word of the Lord. I will turn the tides and I will take you from a season of opposition after opposition after opposition. And you will break through into your season of fruition. The Lord said to me, Kari, tell my children, this is their go-to season. I said, go-to season? And he said, yes, go to season where you are right now to where I need you to go to. For where I'm repositioning you for your season of fruition that you can experience everything that I have planned for you. You see, this is why we cannot shrink back. We cannot forget the prophetic words and the words that the Father spoke to you personally in your inner room. This is why. The inner room, the altar is so important. Ask Anton, I don't, I don't care what prophets give me prophetic words and what high level prophets give me prophetic words, the ones that I hold on to. Not that I don't hold on to those, I do, I really do. But when the storm comes, the words that God has given me in my inner room have becoming my, they become my battle axe. They are the ones that I wield with, they are the ones that I war with. And this is what God says, Hold on to those prophetic words and the things I told you in secrecy in your inner room. Don't forget about them. 
because strategically I am busy moving you. I'm busy moving things in the realm of the spirit on your behalf, even though it feels slowly, but I'm strategically removing and replacing and reversing things and people in your life so that I can reposition you for the season of fruition. And you know, sometimes when there's a repositioning, it takes a long time. It takes time. Think about this huge sh cruise ships. It's got a small little rudder that has to change a whole big ship, and it takes time. And because we so like the things to happen quickly, 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 sometimes we think that God's going to just do things immediately. But sometimes it takes time for God to reposition things in the realm of the Spirit. And when the things in the realm of the Spirit is rightly positioned and things are reversed, then you'll be in the right alignment that the miracle can be birthed and the breakthrough can come. And you know, the Holy Spirit said to me, tell my children the best is yet ahead. My goodness and my kindness will lead the way for many of you. And it's actually reminded me of the story of Ruth, and I'm nearly done. And you know what? When I looked at Ruth, and I said, Lord, but this is an Esther time. This is not, not a Ruth time. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, Esther, it's true, it is an Esther season, but... With Ruth, there was a divine reversal that repositioned not only her, but re that repositioned the nation. And for what, what God wanted to do in the nation and the future gen generations to come. And Ruth was going through difficulty after difficulty, and she knew a level of difficulty. And you all know that she came from Moab, and Moab was known as an as a uncircumcised nation. And they sacrificed little babies in order to appease their God. Imagine growing up in a city where they sacrificed babies so there's no laughter, there's no joy, there's nothing. Everyone was in absolute horror and in absolute fear. And then she decides to marry, like every young girl does, and she marries a guy, a young man, Naomi's son. And as things will happen, what happened is, that her, son, her husband died. And if that's not all, not only the husband died, the husband's father died, the brother died, and I'm like, Jesus, I would say, please just take the will and get me out of here. And if that's not enough, there was famine that broke out. And her only relative, her mommy-in-law said to her, listen here, if it's okay, I'm gonna go back to Bethlehem. Please stay here. And what did she say? Where you go, I go. Your people will be my people. And I believe when she confessed with a mouth, she made a covenant that the God of Naomi will be her God. And the tide at that very moment started turning for her. And as she was walking back, God was already in the realm of the spirit, repositioning things and turning the tide so that the moment she met Boaz, there was a process where the curse was reversed. Things were set in motion. Imagine she coming from a place where they didn't know God suddenly to, into a place where Naomi's God become her God. And things start shifting and changing and God's recovery and redemptive plan for her life just by making a declaration, your God is my God. Now, if God is so faithful to you, someone that comes from a background like that, how much more will he do it for you and how much more will he do it for me? And I believe as he started with his recovery process, you could see how things started shifting and changing in her life and how a process of divine reversals just started where she was a woman that was a widow. Over a process of time, she became a wealthy woman where she was a wanderer, which didn't, she didn't have family, she didn't have a land, she didn't have anything. She was shifted in a moment when there was a divine reversal and a recovery plan of the Lord. She shifted in one moment and she became a woman that had a legacy where Jesus came from. And I want to prophesy over everyone that's sitting here tonight that whatever the enemy thought, he can stop you and block you in whatever area it is. Maybe your area is you're just trusting God to touch your husband or your wife or your financial situation. Whatever it is, I prophesy that the tide is turning in your favor and God is repositioning things in the realm of the Spirit on your behalf so that when God 
God starts uh, reversing things in your life, that you will be repositioned in this season to receive the fruition blessing that God has for you. And you will go from nothing to overflow in a moment. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Anton. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, Lord, I believe it. Let's just pray. So, Father, I just want to come. Just lift up your right hand, which is your hand of authority. Lord, I just want to thank you today in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that every place, Father, where the enemy came to overplay his hand, where the enemy came in to interfere with God's purposes and with God's plans, I want to ask today for a divine supernatural reversal. I reverse every plan, strategy, and assignment of darkness to interfere any longer. We, pull a li- we draw a line in the spirit and we say, no more. And I prophesy that you will break through into your season of God. Go to where God needs you to be in this season so that you can see God's favor, God's love, and God's approval in this season. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Amen.